presenter is Ryan Hanneman, who is a forest entomologist with the USDA Forest Service Forest Health Protection uh, Program with the Northeast Area of State and Private Forestry in Durham, New Hampshire. His responsibilities include the annual aerial detection survey and development and coordination of all aspects of the major force insect detection, evaluation, and prevention programs uh, across Vermont and on the national forest system. Um, he earned his BS degree from the University of Montana and a master's degree from the State University of New York and a PhD from the University of Idaho. So please welcome Dr. Hanneman.
survey and monitoring, and I, I want to put some buzzwords in there, things like rapid and early. These are things that we're, we're constantly trying to do. We're, we're trying to stay ahead of things. Uh, Jen, I think we've had a conversation about using the word earlier because early wasn't good enough for us because we were, we were looking at things and we were finding out, well, you know, it, it's early detection, but it's been here for a little while, so can we, can we actually go earlier? Uh, so, so some of these, these key words in their treatments, uh, as we uh, conduct these, these uh, large-scale survey and monitoring pro uh, programs, we also look to treat, we also look to, uh, to respond to conditions on the ground. And through that, we also look to develop technology. So there are uh, some, some examples that I'll give throughout this talk. But again, building faster and, and better means for, for all of us to go out and, and get information when it comes to forest health monitoring. We have seven strategic areas, uh, risk reduction, invasive species, suppression, survey and monitoring, forest health expertise, tech development, and information management and dissemination. You know, that, uh, that slide there, the, the image on the, the top right there, that's a, a smoke jumper. He's not putting out fires, he's actually climbing the tree looking for little holes, he's looking for the Asian long. You know, the smoke jumpers have a skill set that allow them to, to utilize. Fire season's over, they can come to Durham Field Office, where we reside over in Durham, New Hampshire, we, uh, we drove over this morning and uh, just wanted to sort of make a point that, you know, we're looking at the state of Vermont, but as we start to look at these pests, the pests don't stop for customs, they don't have boundaries and, and you know, political boundaries that they, they operate on. So just uh, our service region here, we, we cover the New England states along with New York, and it's, it's very forested. The, the, New England states, uh, if you look at some of these percentages, Vermont stands out at almost 80% forested. The, uh, the data I used was uh, land cover and, and FIA data. Uh, you, you just get a, a picture that, when you, as you look at even just satellite imagery, Vermont is very green. There's a lot of forest out there. And all of those insects that I, I posted on that, that initial slide, none of them are native, but they are all here in the region. So they feed on forest products. It's, it's one of those things that we're, we're very interested in, in looking at and, and uh, finding new, new means to detect these insects. We use risk reduction, trapping. We have, a, as somebody mentioned earlier, the uh, annual aerial detection survey. Uh, we fly over the Green Mountains, so, uh, the, the state flies the entire state as well, so we get so essentially wall-to-wall -wall coverage in terms of, of aerial survey every year. Uh, ground, uh, ground operations as well, detections, uh, screening. Regulation, we are not a regulatory agency, but we, uh, we do work with uh, APHIS, which is a regulatory agency in, in the states in terms of, of putting up uh, things like um, uh, movement of firewood restrictions and, and regulations. Uh, so we like to consider uh, some, some of these key words that we're starting to, to throw out here. I mentioned earlier, faster, better, quicker, earlier. Uh, kind of the first line of defense in terms of some of these, these big tests. Uh, front line, uh, we're developing some tools right now
then implement with our partners, with the state, with other federal agencies, with universities, strategies in an environmentally sensitive manner, uh, manner, and then to revise that risk map. So it is maybe just a product. It is a, a picture that you take up on, on Capitol Hill, but it can be several pictures. It can be several different products. So to revise that on an as needed basis. Here's just a, a, an example. This is a 2006 um, image. You can see red, and, and you can see red in the state of Vermont, and you can see uh, red throughout from England. A lot of that red over in New York and south into Pennsylvania would be things like uh, Gypsy Moth. Uh, out west, quite a bit of that uh, mortality of our people over the Alpine uh, So an example of mining the risk map uh, using these available stand parameters, we have these, these surfaces of basal area, stand density index, quadratic mean diameter, what does that all mean? We, we have these data, we have, we have a, a national data set. Our, our uh, 2006 version was, was very coarse. It was a, a 250 meter by 250 meter product. That's approximately five acre pixels, so it gets pretty broad. Our newest iteration, the 2011, 12, 13, 14, uh, coming soon version, it's, it's, it's in process right now, but the, the new version is a 30 meter product. So you're looking at pixels of about a quarter acre in size, and, and that's a it's a basal area surface, the stand density index surface, quadratic mean diameter surface that can be used to look at things like introduction potential of some, some of these instincts. So we can start to take the biology of these pests and put some of our data to use so that we can actually find potential hotspots, locate potential areas, or, or going back to the, the idea of, of the early detection concept. Not quite earlier yet. Actions of invasive species continue to work with cooperators again to aggressively prevent rapidly detect and respond early. These, these insects, when you read, uh, when you get into economic literature, the first paragraph usually has dollar figures in the billions, uh, sometimes even more, in, in terms of the economic impact of these pests. We see that as sort of post treatment. It's going to cost us billions of dollars. It would be in all of our best interest to put that money forward in terms of uh, getting on the front end of things and, and sort of getting in front, staying in front, rather than having these things come in and then spending billions of dollars in just uh, tree removal and, and some, some uh, post-hoc education. Develop survey systems and databases that will enhance early detection and tracking and mitigate adverse ecological, economic, and social effects. Conduct risk analyses, evaluate and monitor pesticide use and support as-needed pesticide applications. Uh, looking through literature, uh, since about the mid-1800s, there's over 400 new species of insects just in northeastern forests. Uh, some of the big ones, Gypsy moth, this, this is insect disease, and, and uh, you know, so a, a range of, of pathogens as well. Chestnut blight, uh, everybody should be familiar with all of these. Dutch elm disease, beech bark disease, hemlock folia delta, sudden oak death, Asian longhorn beetle, emerald ash borer, cyrex wood, uh, wood wasp. We just had uh, some information of sudden oak death over in New York in terms of, of some nursery stock screening, and so the, these things are, 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 are popping up all the time. <clears throat> I put a column in here in terms of vectors, and I started to think, you know, I, I could actually fill in every one of them. I could just say yes, there's a vector to every one of them. You start to talk about firewood, uh, and then I started to think, well, these things fly as well. It's, there's, there's all sorts of things in there. These things are very portable. Everything on this list is very portable by one vehicle or another. Here's just a couple of maps of some of these invasive species, and then what I was, was trying to do with this is to sort of highlight uh, what's going on, not just in Vermont, but around Vermont. Cyrex wood wasp has been detected in Vermont. Uh, it's all over uh, New York. It's, it's uh, primary hosts, uh, scotch pine, red pine. Uh, it will go into other pines. The big threat for uh, sort of a national concern would be if, uh, what happens if this thing moves down south where it can become much more aggressive. But it's around. It's, it's been found all over the place. Hemlock woolly adelgid. Uh, Hemlock woolly adelgid is, is here in Vermont. Uh, the, the state folks have been working on HWA. Excuse me, uh, in a uh, collaboration with uh, with other New England states, uh, looking at things like uh, biocontrol and, and how to control hemlock woolly adelgid. It's, it's it's everywhere. And you can see those uh, those yellow. This is a 2012 map. The yellow would be uh, new detections. So you can see that there, there is new detections uh, in and around the state as well. So it's it's uh, it's here. Hemlock woolly adelgid is a killer of hemlock. Uh, down south, it's about three five years in terms of tree death. Up here, it might be upwards of 10 years, but we are to see tree mortality. We see tree mortality between that five and 10 years. Emerald ash borer, uh, the, the latest figure would be 22 states. Uh, so uh, there was just a, in, in 
all over the news in the last couple of days too. North Andover, Mass, just found another population, and it's along uh, it's along the, the Merrimack River there. And it's sort of if you look at the Merrimack River, you can start to connect the dots between Concord and, and, uh, and Andover, Mass. But uh, they found it in Berkshire, Berkshire uh, Mountains, Mass as well, uh, all over New York State. <clears throat> so the gray would be it's not there. You look at the gray state of Vermont, and it's all around. It's up in, in Canada as well. So Emerald Ash Borer is here. Survey and monitoring, this is a, a, a big component of our, our group in, in Durham as well as the target survey and monitoring efforts to areas where the most serious threats to forest health exist and where uh, corrective action is, is feasible. Prepare timely analyses and reports and complete pilot projects on difficult to monitor forests, uh, such as urban and, and riparian areas. Uh, just to, again here, I, I, I wanted to point out uh, that red carpet is, that's the treatment that I've had. Every time I've worked in the state of Vermont, I go to, uh, I think that was the Burlington Airport, and they come up to our little tiny Cessna, they put a red carpet down, and they bring you in, they give you cookies and, and water, it's, it's awesome. And the water, actually, it's like fresh fruit sliced in the water. It's, so the, the, in terms of surveying and, and monitoring, Vermont, I'll come over here anytime. Uh, looking at that picture, uh, top center, though, that's uh, some sericid activity. We've, uh, we've been working on, on a, a tornado project, and we've been looking at everything, uh, all things wood borers, and, and all things, so, so bark and, and wood boring insects coming out of this tornado area, and we're starting to uh, to mine into some of the sericid data to look for things like sucker um, That panel trap, that's an example, you start to see some of these panel traps appearing in the state of Vermont, too, in terms of looking at Asian longhorn people mining. There's, there's been some lure development through the, the uh, research on the Forest Service in terms of developing an Asian longhorn beetle lure and some, some traffic techniques. That panel trap is an example of that. Uh, firewood, we've been looking at this question of, of what actually comes out of firewood, how long is firewood viable, and uh, what, we, what can we learn from that? So we have a, a picture in there of, of quite a few barrels of, of just firewood across the, the range of genera in terms of, of uh, tree species in the Northeast. The picture down in the, uh, the bottom right and uh, bottom center Red pine, we've been seeing uh, rapid red pine mortality in, in the New England states, and we've, we've had reports of it over in, in uh, New York as well. And I've, I've talked to a lot of the state folks in terms of, of interest in, in looking at red pine, and it, it's interesting to, to look across the states in, in terms of what the causal agent is cited as, and it's, it's been very different. And uh, <coughs> things like red pine scale pop up. Uh, some of the, the turpentine, uh, turpentine beetles, there's a uh, red and black turpentine beetle down in Massachusetts. Clodia in terms of some pathogens, um, uh, armal area. So there, there's a, a range of things. That, that picture in the center there, if you look at the growth rates, that's a 1930s CCC area uh, era plantation of red pine. You see these nice big growth rings. And then all, 
graph it, I've, I've gone out on some site visits in, in Massachusetts where the trees are starting to look a little bit poor. And we said, all right, well, this is a primary to survey. And we've gone back three months later when the survey season pops up, trees are all red, they're gone, they're, they're dead. So it's, it's, uh, it's, we've seen down in the southern New England states very fast uh, rapid onset uh, red pine mortality. And it's, it's different from what we saw uh, years back in the Great Lakes states in terms of that pocket decline where there was, it was uh, beetles and, and uh, fungus. And it, was, it was just these, these very characteristic rings that would pop up in the stands. So, everybody see that right there? That's a beetle in there too. That's a, a native depressed by like circa, just hiding, waiting to, uh, to feed. Forest health expertise, assess technical assistance, needs of resource managers, cooperators, and other customers, and adjust staffing levels if possible meet identified needs. Uh, we encourage a high level of forest health expertise in the state forestry and, and ag organizations in, in the New England states. It's, it's awesome. We've had great relationships with all of our, our uh, state and uh, ag organizations. Build stronger linkages to forest service research and universities and support their efforts. So this, this opportunity to, to just come today was, was great. And I, I really enjoyed the, the relationship that I've had with, with UVM in the few years <coughs> Encourage continuing education and experience-based learning for our, our specialists. So we're, we recognize that we're only as good as it, as it gets for that period of time, and, and we're always trying to push ourselves to, to be better at it. So it's, it's one of those things that, you know, through cooperation, we hope to learn and, and build from that as well. We can take a pile of this and do that with it, so we can actually tell you some information. <laughs> we can have, have just this pile of love, what do we do with it? Or we can actually sort it out and, and help you figure out what's out there communities and have a better understanding of, of what what these systems are, are doing. Tech development, identify, develop, and refine effective biocontrol, major insect pests and invasive plants, develop, refine, register pheromones and other behavioral chemicals, and make nationally operational the use of advanced remote <coughs> sensing tools for early detection. Make nationally operational the use of enhanced prediction <coughs> tools and models. And again, going back to the risk map, how do we, how do we refine, uh, refine it and how do we make it better? Here's just an, a quick example. This is a web-based application that you can go on to right now. You can just Google forewarn. Uh, F-Attack put it together. That's the Eastern Forest Ecosystem Threat Assessment Center. A lot of acronyms in the federal government. Uh, F-Attack is a group down in, in uh, out of Asheville, North Carolina that we work with. Uh, they put this forewarn product together. There's a, a, another similar product through uh, Forest Health Technology Enterprise Team and the Remote Sensing Application Center called the Forest Disturbance Mapper. And this is a modus-based product. So going back to that idea of a fire alarm or a first warning, you can go on and then you can look at percent change in NDVI just at a, a 250 meter pixel level and, and get an idea as to, are there any red flags out there of what's happening? So something like a forest tent caterpillar, if we were to see a, a defoliation pop up, uh, it would turn red, we would see red pixels. This year we saw a gypsy moth defoliation popped up great and it was, it was something that we were able to respond to fairly rapidly. Emma Lashmore, uh, back to information and dissemination, this is something that uh, Jen and I have been working on uh, in terms of uh, Hemophilia Delgin. We're branching off uh, this year to work with NASA, <coughs> excuse me, uh, research, and the University of Vermont to look at uh, Emma Lashmore uh, more and, and develop a robust pest detection tool using hyperspectral LIDAR and thermal imagery techniques with broad applicability forest and urban insect and disease threats. So we're using a concept of data fusion where we blend uh, LIDAR data with uh, hyperspectral and thermal data to look at, at uh, overall conditions of, of, of ash and others. And with that, uh, thank you. Uh, I hope you'll find that uh, Forest Health Protection Group is as easy to work with as this flying squirrel did. He just sort of resided in one of our traps. You just let it be for the rest of the season. We'll keep the lures off and let them have the spot. Thank you.
opportunities. They're, they're very opportunistic, and we see that all the time. But it, it's, a, it's a number of, of things. It's soils, it's climate, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's temperature, it's, it's site conditions, it's management, it's, it's everything. And when you, when you pull the room in terms of, of who works where, I think you have a who's who of people that you would probably have to tap into all of them to answer some of these questions. So, so this is kind of what we're hoping to see. And uh, with that, answer some of the questions in terms of what kind of tests are going to do what in the region? Great, thank you, Sorge.